Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. Dive into family tales, explore the human mind, and laugh with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be an awesome season. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jacob Goldstein. I used to host Planet Money. Now I'm starting a new show. It's called What's Your Problem? Every week on What's Your Problem, entrepreneurs and engineers describe the future they're going to build once they solve a few problems. I'm talking to people trying to figure out how to do things that no one on the planet knows how to do, from creating a drone delivery business to building a car that can truly drive itself. Listen to What's Your Problem on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Episode 360, Saving Money on Makeup. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Jill. And today we are talking about makeup. And this is something that... This is an episode we wanted to do for ourselves. <laughs> and so you get to benefit from our findings. And if you are trying to find affordable makeup that looks good and actually fits your complexion and your skin type and all that, then, yeah, we hope you benefit from it, too. Yeah, we we do all of our episodes for us. Who are we kidding? But <laughs> this one, this one's just the actual tangible tips on something that many of us do buy often. So excited to be here. But first, this episode is brought to you by Miniature Cutting Boards. Super underrated, but so, so great. Need a, need to slice a lime, chop a few pieces of garlic, or sliver off just a bit of cheese from that block? Mini Cutting Board. Need to chop just a few things, but don't want to clear your whole counter for a honkin' heavy chopping block? Mini cutting board. And speaking of bite-sized helpful tools, we've got a newsletter we put out three times a week, each one with a different freebie or savings hack or money mindset shift. It's just the right size, super cute, fun, and helpful. Get it to your inbox for free at frugalfriendspodcast.com slash friend letter. Mm, yes. I I do love mini cutting boards. Aren't they great? I will say. Uh-huh. Yeah, I actually do really so like So much them. easier to rinse off. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> this is actually true. Um, so makeup. We have done a few kind of like beauty episodes in the past. Uh, we have got, let me find it here. We've got episode 336, uh, self-care and healthcare treatments for free or low cost. So that can include facials, massages, stuff like that. Uh, and then episode 25, we did frugal beauty, all natural and affordable beauty and skincare products. But we really haven't done anything dedicated to beauty literally since episode 25. <laughs> Which was like six so, years ago. So yeah. I know. So we're we're coming back around and we did a poll on the friend letter. So if you if you love the show and you want to be involved with the episodes we make and the direction we take these episodes, you have to join the friend letter. Sign up for the friend letter, frugalfriendspodcast.com. Uh so we did one and overwhelmed by all the products and brands was your your biggest frustration with buying makeup because there are just so many products and brands. Um, but then we also asked, um, are you actually more frustrated with finding the right skincare routine? And that was the second highest answer. So we might do a skincare episode in the future and because kind of divide episode 25 and go deeper into the skincare portion. But this one, we're going deeper into the makeup, specifically into products and brands. Uh, so we're going to hit some overarching 
rules of thumb in the first article, and then we are going to dive into specific products and brands uh, in the second article. But uh, yeah, so we wanted to also just highlight this one comment from Denise, because we just realized literally maybe last week that you could leave comments on the polls, and we didn't know that. So any comments you've left, we're just now reading them. But she says, there are too many choices and products are so expensive. When you try to get the best product, it turns out doesn't work for you. So you have to shell out even more money for another brand. Uh, She said, this happens to me with foundation because I like full coverage. We're going to be talking a lot about foundation. I did the research, read the articles, bought what I thought was a great substitute and nope, barely works. So now I'm out the money and the money I have to pay to purchase a tried and true yet pricey product. It's very, very frustrating. So Denise, we have heard you. This episode is for you, Denise, and for anybody feeling like Denise. Uh, So let's get into it. The first article is Makeup on a Budget, How to Get a Flawless Look Without Breaking the Bank. Jill, your thoughts. Mm. This one was really helpful. Some of it repeated itself, which is totally fine. We'll just summarize it for you. But I think a a really good summary of here's what you can be focusing on, here's what's fluff. And so first things first, they are recommending that we can buy drugstore brands instead of designer ones. So this, of course, is going to come down to you doing your own research, knowing what does and doesn't work on your skin. And that's part of the frustration that we hear you, Denise, you're talking about is buying something, trying it, finding it doesn't work, and then you're out that money. I think that is where I do like these stores that allow you to to try products kind of in store and sample them. The downside is that it doesn't allow you time to know, well, then what happened when I took the makeup off? How did my skin react? And some of that is just going to be trial and error. But essentially, they're saying that a lot of these drugstore brands are actually super comparable to maybe your more luxury brands as far as ingredients in the product. So this is where we can rely a lot on reviews as well as just comparing products in these different brands. Like, What are you seeing that you do want? What's the luxury brand that's trying to be sold to you? And are there comparable products? Are there even dupes that can be found through Maybelline, L'Oreal, Revlon, who are definitely going to be a fraction of the price? So just because it's sold at a drugstore, let's not just write it off and feel like we have to buy the most expensive. We all know most expensive doesn't necessarily mean better. So this is where we can implement our problem solving, our research, our knowledge of self, and just know that you're not necessarily making the cheap decision. You might be making a very frugal, good stewarding, great decision in a drugstore brand. Um, Maybe it doesn't have as pretty of packaging, but chances are it's very similar in nature and in ingredients to maybe some of the designer brands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we love a drugstore brand. I will say that um, I ventured into Ulta for the first time several months ago because I wanted to find a uh, tinted moisturizer that was like a foundation. And so for something specialty like that, I wanted to I wanted to get one thing that was very high quality and then have all the rest of my makeup be kind of drugstore Uh, because I I have a tinted moisturizer with SPF. Those those are my two things. It needs to have SPF and it needs to be a tinted moisturizer. And I have one from uh, it's I think it's like a BB, like a Maybelline or something uh, from uh, Walmart or Target. And it's it's fine, but it doesn't have a lot of coverage. So I went to Ulta to find one that covers like a foundation. And I did. And I spent $45 on it. And I don't wear it every day. I only wear it when I'm going to be out to see people. Uh, if I'm not, you know, seeing people or, you know, doing my makeup that day, then I wear my other tinted moisturizer that I got from the drugstore. So 
there's a balance here too. If you wear makeup every single day, maybe you don't want to be spending $45 on your tinted moisturizer. Maybe you want to be getting just a foundation with SPF from Target. Decide what's right for you. Pick your one thing that maybe you want to do really good quality and then stick with everything else. Drugstore brand. It's up to you. Uh, But the next thing on the list, well, the next two on the list, we're going to combine. I think the most important things, uh, don't jump on trendy shades and to buy the right shades. So if you were with us for episode 355, we talked about capsule wardrobes, but the secret to a good capsule wardrobe that works for you is to know the colors that look best for you. So your undertones, overtones, hue, all those colory things that I don't understand, but had somebody else look at me and tell me. Uh, highly recommend if you are not if, if you are like me and don't really understand color. So that goes for makeup. So we weren't just talking about a capsule wardrobe, but knowing your colors helps you find the right shades of makeup. And it helps you avoid trendy shades because a problem that both Jill and I had was buying these lipsticks that look good on other people that we want to look good on us, but then put them on and they don't. And just like Denise, like you, then you waste the money that you saved. It's not that the quality is bad. It's that you just, it just wasn't the right shade for you. Uh, And I don't think there's a right and wrong shade. I think if you are somebody who has warm undertones and you want to wear makeup for cool undertoned people like and you feel confident in that and you feel like you look good in that like do it don't let anybody tell you you can't but if that's not you if you just are have spent years buying like I bought this purple lipstick because it looked good on somebody else and I was like I want to be bold like that girl and then I put it on and I was like I am not bold I look sick (laughs) so if that's you uh then then finding your color palette can be really useful and i found a website called uh temptalia temptalia i don't know like temptation but temptalia it will it has all of the name brand and drugstore shades or of like makeup and it will tell you what the color is cuz they all have these weird names <laughs> and I don't know what it means. So like I have a warm autumn color palette. So coral, rust, and brick red. Those are my like shades for lipstick, but none of them are called coral, rust, or brick red. It's like vibrant vixen at midnight. Like I don't know what right. color that <laughs> is. <laughs> right? So like I will go and look at the liquid lipstick that um, we'll tell you about later. And I'll look it up on Temptalia and it will tell me what the actual color, it will interpret what <laughs> Maybelline or Revlon says that color is. Like it's a a warm coral or it's a cool toned red. And that can help me figure out, oh, it's a cool tone. I don't want that. I want a warm toned um, or a neutral, you know, something like that. So highly recommend Temptalia. It's mainly for makeup dupes. So if you know that you love a name brand or a high-end brand and you want to find the drugstore dupe to it, that's actually mainly what this website is for. It will give you comparable drugstore um, dupes. I love that. And I use it for the color to Mm -hmm. find the right shade. Yeah. I can't emphasize enough knowing what colors are going to be best for you. I think this is what can allow us to simplify and have a a capsule makeup collection and just be really confident and not be wasting the money on buying this, buying that. Not even because we see it on somebody else, just just because we like how the color looks in the store and then we realize it's not for us. And then when it comes to if you're choosing foundations or powders, this is especially where I like being able to try the products out. I think I I personally have only been in a Sephora like once before, but 
But I do now know that you can try out these different shades and see. I would recommend trying to get as close to sunlight as possible. That's been a tricky one for me is it's not going to look the same under their fluorescent lights as it does when you then get home. So Mm -hmm. try and get as much natural light when you're trying these things in store. But then I like their tip that if you're stuck between two different colors, shades, and you're not sure which one's right for you, go for the lighter one. Always go for the lighter one. Don't do the darker shade. It's not going to look as good on you. So lighter is going to blend better than than the darker. Number four tip on here is to shop for versatile products. So when you're buying your makeup, making sure that you buy things that can work in a multitude of different ways as much as possible. So with concealer, you might want to buy a lighter shade that could also be used as a highlighter. Um, You can apply foundation and bronzer. So trying to find things, I know that they also created like blush that could also be eyeshadow. So if that's your jam, trying to find things that can be versatile, I would maybe add on to here just simplifying. So maybe if you're not the type of person who wants to put the same thing on your eyes as you're doing on your cheeks, but finding the palette of what's the typical eyeshadow shades that I go for. I don't need all of these things cluttering up my bathroom, but I just want these three to five different colors. I know that this is going to work with a variety of things, or I just need these one to three different lipsticks. So really scaling down whether or not it's versatile, but at least simplified. And I think we run into having this massive collection when we don't exactly know our colors and we're kind of unsure of what looks good on us. So in making some sort of investment of, okay, what is going to be my daily wear kind of makeup? What do I feel best in? I think this is almost too pushing back on the advice to get all of the free samples as you possibly can. That was in an article that we almost did for this episode and decided we don't like any of these tips because, yeah, there are ways to get free makeup by doing all of the samples, but I think that's what leads to so much confusion and a complicated makeup drawer is we've gotten all these samples, but they're made for the masses, not for you as an individual, and it's not your color, but you keep it because you feel bad and you don't want to throw it away and now everything's just complicated. So if that's Mm -hmm. you, you can push back on all of the free samples and spend the $5 on the thing that actually just looks good on you. Uh, And that's going to take some time, but I would say worth it. Whether you've got a friend who's a makeup artist or you do spend the money to go to an Ulta or Sephora and have them do your daily wear makeup and figure out what shades are good on you, and then you can really know these are the makeups that I'm actually going to spend on. These are the colors that I'm going to buy. And you don't have to mess around with all the other confusing stuff that the internet wants mm-hmm. you to purchase. Absolutely. Amen. I would take that like piece of advice if you don't take anything out. So just like buy what works and keep using it. Uh, the fifth is one you can take or leave. Uh, buy your must-haves before you splurge on extras. I would say just to minimize your must-haves. For me, I don't wear eyeshadow. I just have made it a point to say I don't. That's just not something I'm going to wear as as makeup. I'm not going to do it. Uh, sometimes I don't wear blush, but I don't wear a, I don't wear a lot of blush. Uh, there are people who love makeup and love doing makeup. One of my favorite Instagram accounts to follow is Freedom Barbie. She's a PI and she says all these fun PI stories, a private investigator. She says all these fun stories from when like she's on jobs and she does her makeup while she's doing it. Like, so if you love to do makeup, like she's so passionate about it, then that is something that you spend on and you, you don't necessarily have to take these tips. You can take the tips and say no and save in other places so that you have more money to buy the good quality makeups that you want to try. But if you're like me and makeup, I just want to like look presentable. I want to look put together. There are days, sure, I'll go out 
in public without makeup. I'm not wearing makeup right now, but I like wearing it. I don't need it, but I like it. And if you're like that, then I would say just have your like five, five staples. So for me, that's a um, tinted moisturizer, a really good quality tinted moisturizer, eyeliner, because I only have half an eyebrow on either side. Uh, I, <laughs> I, uh, I guess by brow, eyebrow, and then eyeliner, mascara, and then a lipstick. Those are my five. I don't have anything else. I literally have five things for makeup. Um, I have one extra lipstick and I'm trying to find a good rust colored lipstick. So I want to have seven, but I have six. I don't want to lie. I have six. I have two lipsticks. Uh, And that's it. So decide what you want and just let that be enough. You don't have to have a ton of everything or everything, one of everything. I'm resonating with this so much and I'm laughing over (laughs) here because I think it's just hitting me right now that like we might not be the best people to be doing an episode (laughs) on makeup because... (laughs) <laughs> like I I don't know much and that's yeah I I do I have a foundation a finishing powder which woo fancy cover girl I know you so fancy uh, a blush mascara eyeliner eyebrow pencil Yeah oh gosh, I literally I have a blush. Have, and I didn't one say blush. lipstick Uh-huh I have 7 pieces and I want 8 Yeah that's yeah. what it is We we really have simplified and we can Mm -hmm. like talk more about that because maybe that is some of the tips that that people want but this became also really clear to me I've been traveling with friends going different places and I mean I guess in some of the circles people might view me as the high maintenance person and then in other circles I'm like I I don't even know what you're talking about I was on a trip recently with some (laughs) girls and they're like okay and we're gonna want to get back to the hotel you know about two hours before before we go out so we got time to like get ready and I'm like I don't know what that means <laughs> what is <laughs> what is two hours to get ready mean I'm like I'm ready now this is it's not gonna mm-hmm. get better than this it's I not, own it's not gonna get five better. <laughs> things of makeup and I don't know anything else to do with it I've got one lipstick I've got the way that I put on my eyeliner and and that's it like my my travel makeup literally fits in like a two by four inch pouch. And Same. That's, that's all my makeup. That's all of my makeup fits in this small pouch that actually Travis found when he was working at the airport. Like before he got his um, license, he was cleaning airplanes and he found this little uh, pouch that I still use uh, for my makeup. <laughs> Yeah. And that's what I travel. That's what I use on a daily basis. That's what I travel with. And if you follow <laughs> us on Instagram, you'll probably see us post a little snippet of this episode. This is what we look like. It, this isn't, we don't do, yeah, Jen said she doesn't wear makeup. I. You look beautiful. <laughs> I admire it. I. Uh, this is the makeup that I do. There, I do no more makeup for attending a wedding than I do for recording this podcast. Like, it's simple. This is, this is what we're doing. We're not spending a lot of money on this. Yeah. Ultimately, it's not about us, but I hope that we can normalize this because I think on YouTube, on social media, everyone looks so perfect and put together. And I want us to normalize like, Yes, makeup is great. There's nothing against makeup. Um, I love wearing makeup. I love shaving my armpits. But it's not a necessity like 100% of the time. And like, no judgment. Yeah, some people like this is their hobby. They love it. Right. And this is yes. going to be the value of where they choose to spend on. And probably they're not listening to this episode because they're going to spend on the designer brands and they love it. And I admire the people who know how to contour. Never in my life have I ever even attempted to try to contour or understand what that's like. Uh, but I I love it when people really, it, it it's like artistry to me. It's a form of artwork that you mm-hmm. can do on yourself. I think it's beautiful. It's not where I am choosing to spend my time. If someone wants to do it to me, I, I'd probably love it. That'd be so fun. Um, but I just, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. But yeah, but let's normalize being 
in the safe in the spaces that we want to be in. Yeah. Being in the safe space. Like a like a few weeks ago, we had a bill of the week where uh she, you know, she'd wanted to shave her head and never felt comfortable and finally just did it. And sh- and she's living in her in her space in her truth, and it's beautiful. So like li- so makeup, no makeup, doesn't have to be all in or nothing. Like or nothing. You know, yeah. let's just pick our let's just pick our Find completion your and live in our completion. In this, yeah. yeah. Okay, last one on this list is number six. Just to be aware of expiration dates. I this is a reminder to myself. I'm Same. classic for just using it until it runs out, even if it takes two years to run out. And mm-hmm. that's a problem because it can expire. It, I think pr- probably one of the biggest concerns with that is as you're touching your face with it on a regular basis, it, you're going to get bacteria in your makeup. And that's just not great, especially your eye makeup, your mascara, your eyeliners. Uh, you want to be especially aware of when did you first open it? How long have you been using it for? That's going to be an area that you might want to be willing to throw away if it's past its expiration date. Nobody needs eye infections. So good tip. Yeah. It's the not necessarily money saving tip. Well, I guess it is, depending on what kind of medical costs come along with your eye. If you get an eye infection, (laughs) yeah, that's a medical cost. Save money on eye infections. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic, oracle.com slash strategic. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. You might be asking yourself, what is Sibling Revelry? Yeah, well, we just made it up. They'll have some laughs and maybe inspire some people along the way with universal tales of what it's like to grow up with brothers and sisters. We're full blood siblings, the only full blood in our family well not in the world i mean no in the whole world that's just it like no one dive into family tales and explore the human mind with guests like joel and benji madden and it's fun because we've decided to open it up you know to really like all kinds of different siblings and it's going to be an awesome season it's more than a podcast it's a celebration of the ties that bind us Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. So our next article, we're getting into it. Let's talk about products. Let's talk about brands. Here's the, here's what we used to come up with these. I don't like the articles that are like, we compiled the best things based on Amazon reviewers. I hate that because half of Amazon reviews are fake. You can go to Fake Spot, get that Chrome extension, mm-hmm. you can and it helps you spot fake like Ooh. reviews so you're not getting these products that say they have like 4.8 stars but half of them are fake 5 stars. Ooh. So, not hashtag not sponsored. Okay. I want to hear from the experts, the makeup experts. I want to hear from people who really review these products in-house. That's why I love Wirecutter, uh, which is owned by the New York Times. I love Wirecutter because they don't, I mean, they'll take into consideration the reviews only to decide what they test. Uh, and then they all, they test in-house. So that is the, I hold that standard for everything else in life. Birdie 
B-Y-R-D-I-E is really good. They do in-house testing for makeup um, and beauty products. Uh, But another one, a good one is Reviewed. And so this article is from USA Today, but it was written by Reviewed. And it's Shop the Best Drugstore Makeup Products from L'Oreal, F, Revlon, and more. Elf, sorry. (laughs) Uh, So this is the article that we took uh, and do have some of our own recommendations as well. I, I'm i going to compile this list into an Amazon list because it'll be easier for me to give you one URL instead of six or, or 12. Um, so I haven't made it yet, but it'll be at frugalfriendspodcast.com slash makeup. Mm. Let's, mm. I'm going to write We're it down. We're just calling it. Yeah. We're going to call it, and all of these are going to be there. So let's start with the first one. We're looking at mascara. All right. So our favorite, not our favorite, but Reviewed's favorite, well, and my favorite. Uh, I got two options for you. One is from Reviewed, and the other, um, they're, they're both from Reviewed, but I looked at their actual, like, test of mascaras. So the one on this article is the Milani... 10 in 1, uh, M-I-L-A-N-I. That is a uh, brand easily found at Target, Walmart, Walgreens, and it's their high, it says highly rated 10 in 1. Like the name of the mascara is highly rated. (laughs) It's not just a highly, (laughs) they're really doing it. Wow. Good for you, Milani. Uh Uh, So it's their highly rated 10 in 1 is their top pick um, because it's easy to apply to the lashes without clumping. Uh, But in their test on a bunch of drugstore mascaras, they did find that it comes off with in water um, with rubbing, stuff like that. So if you plan to be crying or rubbing your eyes, maybe not. If you're a crier, then I would say this is the one I use, is the CoverGirl Lash Blast. It is the orange uh, CoverGirl uh, mascara. This is the one I use. I love it. Uh, They say it was their former top pick. Uh, It doesn't come up with, there's like no smudging or flaking. You only need one coat. Apply smoothly. I can vouch for all of those things. But the cons is it has a stubby wand. And I can also agree with that. But Actually, its wand is different from other ones. It's not like a like a brush. It's a plastic n- little nubs. And I find that that's better. So I I love the CoverGirl Lash Blast. It's the orange one. And but Milani high highly rated 10 in one. What is the 10, ten. things that it I, does? That's what I'm over here wondering. Who knows? There's no way it's doing 10 things. Absolutely not. Probably but two, I, and they're breaking it into 10 somehow. How can it do more than one thing <laughs> in a <the> mascara? <laughs> oh, separates and builds lashes is two of the things that it does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You tell us if you love that <laughs> one. You let us know. Ten things. So let us know the other eight things <laughs> that it does. Ah! Clearly, we're not sponsored by any of these products, and that's why it's fun to talk about <laughs> them because it's not. Yeah, we're not getting money from any of them. We're just truly trying to help you find what's going to work for you. So the the next product is foundation. So for the dewy look, they are saying that the top rated one is the Fit Me Dewy and Smooth foundation. I'm also clicking all these links to give you like From pricing. Maybelline. Oh, did I not say that? Oh, yeah. Maybelline. Uh, it's about $9. Yep. $8.99, which is great. Personally, I do use... What do I use? Clinique. My goodness. <laughs> I use Cl- Clinique and... For me, I love your tip, Jen, back in that first article talking about finding maybe your one or two products that you're willing to spend on and then the rest that maybe aren't as important or you can still meet your needs without spending a ton of money. With a foundation, something I'm putting all over my skin, it has Mm -hmm. felt important to me to have something that 
I know I'm not going to break out with, can last all day. I'm sure there's other products. I kind of just like grew up on Clinique. So it's the one that I that I choose to use and I know that it works with my skin. So I'm personally really hesitant to stray from that. I don't want to do some sort of science experiment on myself that then causes my skin to break out. So foundation is the one thing that I will spend on, but I think Clinique's foundation is something like $27. So yeah, if Mm -hmm. you know that your skin is pretty resilient and you can put whatever on it, um, then then, and you're willing to just try things out, it sounds like there's some really great options for under $10, which I think is really great. If you don't want the dewy look, you'd prefer the more matte look, then we recommend CoverGirl True Blend matte made liquid foundation. These cosmetic companies are adding all sorts of words into complicated titles. Yeah, it is really annoying, but it's funny to (laughs) to say. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I will, um, I know I didn't mention the name of the tinted moisturizer I use, but I said it was like 45. It's actually 20 bucks. (laughs) And it's really good. It's Smashbox Halo. Uh, and it is, it wears just like a foundation, but it's got SPF 25. It's a tinted moisturizer and it's really lovely. I got it from Ulta and it's vegan, cruelty-free, all of oil-free because I have oily skin. So it is, it is my go-to now, but yeah, I have also used plenty of drugstore mascaras or sorry, plenty of drugstore foundations that haven't made me like break out or anything. They've been totally fine. It's just like I wanted to switch to a tinted moisturizer and over like in the drugstore. Those are very thin. Yeah. I And I do love the ones that have the SPF in them. I think that's Mm -hmm. great. I know some estheticians will balk at the found, you know, foundations that have SPF. But I got to imagine that 25 is still better than nothing. Oh, for Florida, you have to. Every, yeah. I mean, everything you put on your face got to have some kind of SPF if you don't want to look like Florida woman. That's just it. All right. Let us look at eyeliner. So one of the suggestions from this article is the, I should probably prepare and scroll down. I I wrote it in that one. It's the CoverGirl Perfect Point Plus eyeliner. So many words. So much words. alliteration. Yeah. Uh, but I also found another article saying the NYX, NYX, Professional Makeup Epic Wear Liner Stick uh, is also good. I don't think you can go wrong with one of the eyeliner sticks that just uh, winds up it's not a pencil. It just kind of, you twist it and it goes up. Like, I don't think you can go wrong with one of those. Uh, yeah, that's personally. what I use. I can't do the liquid eyeliner. I, no, no. My, I'm realizing, I guess I just don't have that steady of a hand and my skin isn't that, it's got a lot more give to it than it did when I was 16. <laughs> and it mm-hmm. just doesn't want to go. There's too, too much elasticity or not enough. I don't know. Whatever it is where it's just kind of going all over the place on my eyes is what happens to me with the liquid stuff. But then the pencil, I don't want to be trying to find the best possible pencil shaver and then get shards of wood all over my bathroom floor so yeah, that the pencil that's not really the pencil that you can wind up, we don't know the right terms for it. Yeah. Next on the list is best lipstick. And this I feel is just where all makeup can come together. If you don't have anything else in your repertoire, but you have a lipstick, I feel like that's all you kind of need is a good lipstick. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're recommending Maybelline Super Stay Liquid Lipstick for liquid, if you want the liquid kind. And then I Rev- prefer the liquid. Uh huh. And then Revlon Super Lustrous Lipstick for the stick kind. Yeah, I love to do the the liquid. I think it's just easier to put on, but some people like a stick. So that maybe it doesn't leak. I don't know. 
but I I like a liquid and I like a matte. So the Maybelline Superstay. And so this is where you can go. So this is what I would do. I would copy Maybelline Superstay liquid lipstick. I would go to Temptalia and I would search that and it would theoretically come up. Yes, uh, it would come up with all of these. Gosh, they have a lot of Maybelline Super Stays. Uh, I'm just going to put this. I'm just going to touch on this first one, the matte ink. Uh, and then you can see all of the shades of it. And you just select the shade. This is not it. But for the sake of time, I will say this pink one that I have this that I that I have selected is called You Wouldn't Get It. <laughs> what is that color? Clearly if you pink. Had to guess, Jill. Clearly. You wouldn't it you wouldn't actually... even understand green. It's probably green. You wouldn't even understand. <laughs> it is a neutral toned medium dark pink with a semi matte finish. So it is yeah, so when you understand your color palette, you know if you're more like warm, warm, or neutral, warm, neutral, cool. And you can say like, my pink is a coral or a dark pink or a light pink so that you can use this site to, you know, figure out which one is for you. So this is how I use Timtalia. I got a free lipstick, speaking of samples that you don't actually need. But this sample is actually in my color palette fl- from Clinique. <gasps> and I'm now looking, like, what is it called? Ginger Flower. God, I think I need oh, reading wow. glasses. I'm like, am I saying that right? <laughs> I'm like squinting and pulling my head back. Oh, we old, though. Ginger Flower. Guess what color that is? Who knows? This one. Uh, That's what this orange? looks like. This kind is of it like orangey? No, not even. Oh God. Oh well, yeah. Maybe. No, not at all. No. Anyways, let's move on. So best blush. This is one that I have seen. Literally, I've I've been. I wrote a a best drugstore makeup article back in 2016. That was my first foray foray into researching drugstore makeup. So since I wrote that first article. One blush has come up time and time and time again. And it's the only, I think the only one you need to know for blush, it's Milani's Baked Blush. Milani's Baked Blush, I think, is the only drugstore blush that you need. Everybody loves it on every website from the dawn of time. Wow. And it comes in 11 different colors, ranging ranging from deep coral to light pink. Uh, So... This is this is it. Does Milani's it blush bucks. do 20 different things? Is it a 20 in one? I <laughs> I don't know. Uh just a little jab well, at you, Milani, but 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 you're doing know. all right. You're doing good. You twice on this list. Yeah. All right. And lastly, we've got best eyeshadow. L'Oreal Paris Infallible 24 hour waterproof eyeshadow. Woo! 18 in one. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, we love a good waterproof eyeshadow. You can go swimming and still pop up out of that water and have your eyeshadow on still. Mm hmm. Uh, Again, you can decide that you don't want any of this. You want some of it. You do like the eyeshadow. Go for it. Here's one that that the internet says across the board, this is a real great drugstore option. And there are 26 shades. So that is, and they're all very pretty. They are very pretty. I don't wear any eyeshadow, but there's a and they're good prices. Like on Walmart, you can get one of these colors for like five forty two. They're regularly eight, eight or nine. So really good, good price on those. So as a recap for brands, good brands that we're seeing, Milani, you know, ninety seven in one. <laughs> uh, CoverGirl, we're seeing, <laughs> we're seeing Maybelline. And L'Oreal, all of your 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 cover girl, cover girls on this list several times. Milani is on this list several times. So I think if you Maybelline 
is several times. So I think if you stay within those, you're going to have a good chance of getting a, a makeup brand. But again, we're going to link these um, and maybe a few more in the in the right range if we think of them later. Frugalfriendspodcast.com slash makeup. I'm excited That's for that. That is end. what I need. I never know what what exactly to buy, who's got the best. So here you go. You can pull mm-hmm. it up on your phone when you're at the drugstore and use it as a guide to help make your purchase along with what your colors are. Figure out figure out what right. works for you. Figure out what you do. Yeah, plug those colors into Temptalia to see what the color really is or at least what the explanation of the color is to see if that's your shade. And you know what else you can plug in and just already know it works for you? It's always your shade. The Bill of the Week! That's right! It's time for the best minute of your entire week! Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the bill of the week. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jill. Uh, This is Emily. I'm a somewhat long-term follower. And I was just calling to share my bill of the week. I bought a house recently and I'm trying to furnish it. And one of the things I needed was a desk. So I just bought a desk at a thrift store for a dollar and six cents because the desk was on sale at the thrift store. I'm pretty thrilled today. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you on Friday. Emily, a dollar and six cents. That's a deal. That's a deal. That is a deal. Right there. Mm -hmm. I'm not I sure it that. could have been less expensive uh, other than free or them paying you. I love that they charged a dollar for it and then plus tax, unless it was a nonprofit. And then they literally charged a dollar six for it. For like but a full on piece of go. furniture. Yeah. This is exciting because, yeah. first of all, you're buying used. So you are repurposing, recycling, not buying new. That's a beautiful thing. And then you just get a, an amazing deal on this. Like, I got to imagine it's mm-hmm. a, a normal-sized human desk, not a miniature desk. So to get a piece of furniture <laughs> for six is incredible. I'm going to assume you didn't buy a child's desk for yourself. It's a great, <laughs> great place to go first when you're furnishing your home. Thanks for that tip. Yes. Thanks for sharing your good news. If you all are listening and you're getting furniture, human-sized furniture, just at a killer price because you're buying used, let us know. Also, if you're just out here doing life, your name is Bill. You just want to tell us about what life is like as a Bill. We're going to take that too. And literally anything else that's related to the word Bill. doesn't even have to be finance related. Frugalfriendspodcast.com slash Bill. We love it. We're here for it. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. You might be asking yourself, what is Sibling Revelry? Yeah, well, we just made it up. They'll have some laughs and maybe inspire some people along the way with universal tales of what it's like to grow up with brothers and sisters. We're full-blood siblings, the only full-blood sibling. In our family. Well, not in the world. I mean, no, in the whole world. That's just it. Like, no one. (laughs) Dive into family tales and explore the human mind with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up, you know, to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be an awesome season. It's more than a podcast, it's a celebration of the ties that bind us. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. From the studio who brought you the number one podcast, The Piketon Massacre, this is Murder 101. 
A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. Yeah, those murders happened in the mid-1980s. He's out there doing stuff. He just didn't stop. Everything that the students predicted through their profile turned out to be accurate. Redhead killer profile. Male, Caucasian, 5'9 to 6'2, 180 to 270 pounds. Unstable home, absent father and a domineering mother. Right-handed, IQ above 100, most likely heterosexual. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. Just because some of these women no longer have people to speak for them does not mean that they deserve to not be spoken for. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? I said, are you going to kill me? He said, yes. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And now it's time for The Lightning Round. Pew, pew, pew. All right. So right now we are going to share our current makeup faves. Or, or it's your current holy grail makeup. Oh, Jen. So, wow. I know, right? Uh I will say that that Smashbox Halo is like my holy grail uh, tinted moisturizer. I have already said that. Um, but I am finding that uh, my Revlon, actually my Revlon lipstick that I have. Hold on. Let me let me go get it so I can say what it really is. Okay, I'm awesome. going to then I'm going to say what mine is. My holy grail of makeup at this point is just a lipstick. I don't even think that I would say specifically a, a certain kind. I'm just recognizing that if all I do is put on a lipstick that works with my color skin tone, then that's all I need. Mm -hmm. I'm also leaning into, I'm in my eyebrow era and recognizing that if I'm able to shade my eyebrows, that also helps with looking a little bit more polished because my eyebrows are almost non-existent without some sort of shading. So these are the things I'm really leaning into. But also, side tangent on this, I am also in a phase where I would like to wear, to not feel like I need to put on a foundation every day. And I don't go heavy with it, but there's something in me that just for decades now feels like this is just a part of my routine. I brush my teeth and I put on some basic makeup and I'm really wanting to lean into being able to be comfortable in my own skin and confident going outside of my house without doing my full makeup routine and recognizing that part of that is needing to feel like I really love my skin. And so I'm in a season now where I'm leaning more heavily into just a skincare routine that I know we're going to do a separate episode on that. So I'm not going to say a whole ton about that, but realizing that if I can find a good cleanser, moisturizer, sun protector for my skin that I'm going to feel less likely to need to have to spend then a ton on makeup. To me, makeup for the way that I've approached it feels more like a band-aid for the things that I'm not doing to care for my skin. That's generally why I'm wearing it is because I feel like I want to cover up blemishes or I want to cover up my droopy eyes. And really what I need to be doing is like focusing on the nutrients that I'm eating and the sleep that I'm getting and how well I'm actually caring for my skin as like a precursor to my makeup routine. So just saying that in case anybody else is finding themselves there to kind of take a few steps back before we even get to makeup and look at how are we caring for ourselves in these other ways and maybe not feeling like we have to wear makeup to feel like we're looking our best. Are there other things that we can be doing to feel good about ourselves? Are there other areas that we're ignoring? So that's my roundabout holy grail of makeup. All right, Jen, you're back. What's your lipstick mm -hmm. you found? Yes. Okay, so I have been wearing the Revlon Color Stay Suede Ink, and I know I love a liquid, but I've actually been enjoying this lipstick uh, in the color 
hot girl. What color do you oh, think hot girl is? <laughs> that's a that's a red for sure. Nope, it's like a like a dark. I don't know, like a it's not pink, but it's not coral, but it's not rust. It's like a. I just took the the sheet of paper that we had with the best lipstick colors for our color palette, and I I found one that was like it, and so like I wrote on the paper with it, and it was identical, and I. And it was in an uncategorized color. So hot girl is the color of hot girls. And I like that. Um, But so I'm really liking that. And uh, for years, I was pretty much only wearing the wet and wild. I think it's cat suit. Uh, I love that matte liquid lipstick. But they don't have any colors in my color palette. Um, but if you find the Wet n' Wild um, liquid cat suit, that is like my favorite. Uh, and it retails for about five bucks. That's, I know. So that one's available at all of them. And that was, that used to be like my holy grail of liquid lipsticks is the cat suit matte. Um but then other, yeah, that's really it. I love the orange mascara. I forget what it's called all the time. I just know it's bright orange. I literally just said it. It's CoverGirl, right? We literally just said it. Yeah, that. Yeah. But that's not my whole, I wouldn't say that's my holy grail of mascara. But I would say that that Wet n' Wild cat suit, um, this Revlon Color Stay Suede ink, and my uh, my tinted moisturizer. Yeah. I, right just now. for one final piece on ways to save money, I think it's just recognizing all the marketing ploys around the beauty industry. And I think being okay with discovering what works for you and sticking with that. I think we can get so caught up in the the new product the the fancy packaging somehow new ingredients coming on the market and all of a sudden we all need this ingredient in our beauty product and this never before seen and reality is no it's probably just repurposed repackaged and just being really aware of what is being marketed to you? Do you actually need that? And that goes hand in hand with all of our other episodes on just mindful spending, values-based spending, finding what works for you, and then clearing out all the other fluff and noise. Mm -hmm. And it's okay if it's a process to find what works for you. But then once you do, we can then find contentment and enough in that place and not fall for all the gimmicks and pretty packaging. Yes. Yes. Your face is beautiful as it is naturally. Your hair on your head and your body is beautiful as it is naturally. Your skin is beautiful. We are simply looking for ways to to have fun and sometimes you know art art it up zhuzh it up (laughs) but not because we need to but because we like to have fun Mm, mm. on a budget and we like to read just all the labels on this makeup (laughs) and have fun guessing what color is that possibly please Take a picture, find your favorite shade of anything, lipstick, eyeshadow, whatever. I want you to take it out and look at the name of the color <laughs> and, and and like get, have your friends guess. Like, what color is hot girl? <laughs> I don't even know what color this is. <laughs> it, to be honest, I don't know what color it is. Love it. So thank you for listening. We love reading your kind reviews of the show. Uh, especially loved this one from the bookkeeping artist. Shout out, girl. Being cheap is not the same as being frugal. I love Jen and Jill. They're the queens of frugality. I'm happy they're here to help us cut through the BS and the overwhelm of finance advice by dissecting what works and what's fluff. There's no investing or fancy math talk here. It's all practical, everyday advice that makes you feel good about your money choices. Best quote so far, the best way to not spend money is to spend time making it. 
Keep up the good work, ladies. Yes. I <laughs> That's sometimes quote. still believe that. Yeah, that is my quote. And I sometimes still believe that because I love making money. I do find that an enjoyable hobby. Thanks, bookkeeping artist. And thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed this show, this episode, if you've been enjoying us, please do take a minute to leave a rating and a review. It does help us find other community members, other frugal friends know if this is going to be the right show for them. And if it's good or simple or funny or enjoyable, (laughs) especially if it's a five star, we might read it on our show. You might get your little name shouted out if that's what you like. Please leave your favorite shade of lipstick in your comment and say that we helped you figure out that it was for you or not for you, (laughs) that you realized hot girl was for you or hot girl was not for you. Hot girl shades for me. We helped you do that. Ginger flowers (laughs) for me. (laughs) See you next time. (laughs) Bye. Frugal Friends is produced by Eric Siriani. If that's even what this says, I'm still not convinced. I might need reading glasses. (laughs) Ginger flower. It probably is. Those are two words that sound like they could go together to make up. What is a ginger? I don't think ginger makes flowers like the ginger root. Does ginger root flower? Maybe it does. I don't know. You're the plant girl. Does I'm hot girl. Yes. Oh my gosh, ginger root does flower. But guess and what's what? the color of that flower? Yellow. <laughs> Yellow. These what people, these people are just these coming people? up with names they don't even know. They've not done Oh, you know what? Oh, wait a second. No. I think yellow and it can be pink. Okay. Oh. Okay, I just oh, found wow, another one. Oh, wow, it's very tropical looking. It is very okay. similar to this color. Okay. So this is the Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink. I don't love this one, so I don't recommend it. I am just looking for the color. It is Charmed. What color is Charmed? B- black. Being charmed. What? Black. <laughs> black? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is... That's what yeah, 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 that's it. That's it. No, it is a... It's like a coral. It's like a darker, corally color. I love the shade. I don't love the feel, the lip feel of it. So I wear it because it's a very good neutral. You wouldn't think like it doesn't look neutral, but when you put it on, it's neutral. Oh, wow. This was a fun pastime, I'm remembering, for Eric and I. As I, I've got a collection of nail polishes that is like the one thing that i do have a collection (gasps) of and he was cracking up reading the the names of the colors of these nail polishes and then he went on a rampage guessing then like realizing that there are no rules just whatever you want to call it is what you can call it it was hilarious just picking up a random color guessing he he was retitling them to just these insane names which is a really there you go free date night idea pull out your makeup drawer and name come up with the names of the colors together declutter your makeup and only keep the ones with the best names (laughs) so i'm just now seeing that this has another language on it um the hot girl one (laughs) <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, I believe this may be Spanglish. It says Chica Sexy. So um, <laughs> that's the other name for it. So uh, hot girl, sexy girl, you doing it? Though. Yeah, you, you. This is like your. This is like your Zanga profile name. That's that's oh, actually yes. the titles of all of our lipstick colors. Their Zanga profile. X X O Baby Girl. You should probably put it in your Instagram profile what your uh, best <laughs> lipstick shade profile is. profile was? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's now in your Instagram profile. So you're welcome. That tip is bonus. Uh, 
Love to see it. Kisses, buttery sweet, bye bye Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. Dive into family tales, explore the human mind, and laugh with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be an awesome season. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Frances Fry. And I'm Ann Morris. And we are the hosts of a new TED podcast called Fixable. We've helped leaders at some of the world's most competitive companies solve all kinds of problems. On our show, we'll pull back the curtain and give you the type of honest, unfiltered advice we usually reserve for top executives. Give us a call and we'll help you solve the problems you're stuck on. Listen to Fixable on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.